In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an AI powered podcast generator. You can pass in a URL to any article and our platform will then generate the dialogue between two hosts and it will then use a powerful text to speech model to create the audio for the podcast. For instance, let's grab this article from OpenAI. So let's paste in that URL, let's click generate conversation. And this one, I'll scrape the content from pretty much any article online. Then we'll see the conversation streaming in in real time. And of course, we can scroll down and see exactly what this conversation will look like. And after that, we'll use text to dialogue to generate the podcast audio. Oh my God, they released GPT Real Time as GA, a speech to speech model that handles tool calls and speaks like a human. This is huge. <sighs> Huge in marketing copy, sure, but it's actually interesting. Single model audio in out reduces latency. That's not trivial. Wait, single model? So no chaining STT and TTS? That should feel way more natural, like pauses and tone preserved. This is very similar to something like Notebook LM, but of course, we'll learn how to build this ourselves. At face value, this might seem like a very simple app to build, but in reality, even coding agents will do a terrible job at building something like this using simple prompts. So I really wanted to use this as an opportunity to teach you how to go about building real world software using coding agents. Now, whether you're a hardcore developer or a vibe coder, you will learn a lot throughout this process. So instead of rushing through the project at a high level, I'm actually going to break the series up into smaller videos, each diving deep into my thought process and the technology used for each of these sections. So in this video, we'll have a look at the basic setup of this project, and I'll take you through a high level architecture of all the technologies we'll use to build this application. And I do want to mention that you will be able to download the source code for this project for free using the link in the description. And also, if you have any questions related to this project or would want me to explain something in more depth, then please leave a comment below. Before starting the build process, I like to draw out all the core functionality that will be needed in our application. Yes, we could then use an LLM, maybe we can use an agent in planning mode to help us flesh out each of those steps. But in order for you to really understand the application that's being built, I highly recommend drawing out this diagram. The first thing we need to do is scrape websites. So we want users to pass in a URL to pretty much any website and any page, and our application should reliably be able to extract data from that web page. Now that we have the content from that web page, we want to create this conversation between two different hosts. So let's call this generate conversation. And I'll even connect these with a little arrow. And once we have this conversation, we want to pass the conversation to a service that will generate the audio. So let's add that final step and let's call this generate audio. Cool. And let's connect these two. And this basically makes up all the core functionality for our application. And of course, at this point, you can have a back and forth with your agent to understand the best tools for each of these steps. But let's break the solution down into its simplest steps and think about which services we can use to solve this problem. For scraping websites, there are just so many valuable services out there. You have services like Firecrawl, we also have Cheerio, and lots, lots more. For this video, we will be using Firecrawl, and I'm not sponsored by them, it just so happens to be one of my favorite services for scraping websites. But of course, you can use any other tool you want. And just a little side note, you don't have to do this, but if you have access to N8N, you could create a simple workflow and then see if they already have integration with any of those web scrapers. And that's basically what I did. So I asked an agent to propose a few scrapers and I then used N8N to create a very simple workflow where I manually trigger the workflow, I then call that scraping service, and I then analyze the results. And eventually I settled on Firecrawl. So no code platforms like N8N or Flowwise can be really useful if you just very quickly wanted to test out any of these services. And now that we know that Firecrawl will be able to scrape the website and return the content for us, 
we can think about this generate conversation step. So what do we need? Well, we need some sort of AI model to generate this conversation for us. Well, we know at this point we'll need an AI model to generate the conversation text. So maybe we can decide on which LLM provider we want to use. If you're running this application locally, you could even use a free open source model. Personally, I'm going to use OpenAI's GPT-5 model. But of course, feel free to use any model you want. Then let's have a look at generating audio. There are a few really good services out there, but 11 Labs is without a doubt one of the best. Again, I'm not sponsored by them, but I've tried a lot of different platforms, including open source solutions, and nothing comes close to this. And the reason I'm using 11 Labs is because of this model, 11 V3. Now we've all seen typical text-to-speech models where you pass it a piece of text and it responds with audio. But what this model can do is produce dialogue. So this can generate a conversation between multiple speakers within the same conversation. And this model allows the voices to be very expressive and natural. Let's have a listen. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Knock, knock. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. <laughs> Come on, man. Please. I promise you'll love this one. Nope. No, no, no. Never again. The last 10 weren't funny. The next 10 won't be funny. And that conversational effect is exactly what we need in our application. So what we'll say here is 11 Labs V3. Cool. So just like that, we've mapped out a high level view of our application. We know we need the ability to scrape websites, convert that audio into conversations using LLMs, and then finally convert that conversation text into dialogue with multiple speakers using E11 Labs. Well, let's briefly discuss the tech stack that we'll be using. And this decision is really simple. We will be using Next.js. This is a meta framework that covers everything from the front end to the server side logic. Next.js is without debate one of the most popular frameworks used in full stack development out there. So although our application is relatively simple compared to larger applications out there, but by learning Next.js at this point, you'll be setting yourself up to build more complex solutions in the future. In fact, my agentic coding starter kit uses Next.js as well. And this includes everything from authentication, data persistence in the database, file storage, AI integration, beautiful UI components, and much, much more. So you can use a simple template like this to build real world applications. And by the way, you can use this boilerplate for free and I'll link to a getting started video in the description. But in this video, we're not going to use boilerplate as I really want to show you each step for building this application. So in our flow, I'm just going to say core components and off to the side, let's say tech stack. And here I'm simply going to list out all the technology that we're using in this application, like Next.js. Firecrawl for web scraping and for the LLM, we will be using OpenAI, but we will not be using their API or SDK directly. And I'll explain why. For the AI functionality, we will be using the AI SDK from Vercel. We could have called the OpenAI endpoint or SDK directly, but by building applications professionally, I've learned the hard way never to do that. You always want an easy way to hot swap models at any point. So what does hot swapping mean? So we could hot swap models. So we have this function here to generate the conversation and then that spits out the conversation text. Now to do this, we'll use OpenAI's GPT-5. Now what happens if we want to move away from GPT-5 to something else? And I mean, we all know by now, new flagship models get released pretty much every week. Or we could even have a situation like what Anthropic had recently, where a bug caused the models to have reduced intelligence. This means we should be able to easily swap out the models without having to rewrite our entire solution. So what the AI SDK will allow us to do is to simply break this connection and only replace the model. Everything else in our solution stays the same. 
In fact, this would be something like Anthropic for Sonnet as an example. So by not using the OpenAI SDK or API directly, we have the flexibility of swapping out the models at any time. Another thing is if we call the APIs directly, we would have to implement interface specific rules for each different provider. So for this tutorial, we'll definitely be using the AI SDK. And I do want to mention there are other frameworks that are excellent at doing the same type of work, like Langchain and Langgraph. But truth be told, I found better results with the AI SDK, especially when it comes to dealing with structured output. Then finally, for generating audio, we will be using the 11 Labs SDK. So again, if you have absolutely no idea what tech to use, I at least recommend figuring out what the core components are, and then you can give these core components to an agent and maybe run it in plan mode and ask it what technologies it would recommend. Now that we have a plan and we know what elements to build into this application, we can finally start building our project. So go ahead and open your code editor. I'll be using cursor for this video, but of course you can use any IDE you want. In fact, if you're using a coding CLI like Claude Code, that's perfectly fine as well. In this project, open up your terminal and now we're going to install Next.js, which is that meta framework that's going to control everything in our application. So in the terminal, run npx create dash next dash app at latest space period, then press enter. I'm going to say yes to using TypeScript, we'll also use ESLint, and I'm simply going to say yes to all of these questions, and no for modifying the import alias. And now that Next.js is installed, we can start the development server. First, I'm actually just going to clear the console, so it looks a bit neater. Then I'm going to run npm run dev. In fact, I'm going to use a different package manager called pnpm, but npm will work just fine. Then let's run this. Next.js will now give us a link to our dev server. And if we open this, you should see this page popping up, which means we're ready to start building our application. In the next video, we're going to build the user interface for our application. And I'll show you a lot of cool tips and tricks to use agents to give you very unique results. Let me know down in the comments what questions you have about building applications like this or what I should include in the next video. So I'll see you in the next one.